And I'm going to now hand over to Hugh Lamb, our Deputy Dean, to announce our Trainee of the Year winner. Thank you, Helen, and thank you for the school. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for including me in this uh, really significant and uh, uh, lovely event. Um, it's my pleasure to announce Ibris Ajaz as the uh, Trainee of the Year. Now, you all may be wondering, how did this happen? How did I get here? Let's rewind. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, my name's Breeze and this year I was named the trainee of the year for the Peninsula Deanery in Southwest England. Now you may be wondering how does one get this award and what should you do if you're interested in pursuing something like this? So first of all what I'll kind of go through is the the four things that I was commended upon when this ceremony occurred and then ways you also can look for these types of roles and how you can basically set goals for yourself so that you can also excel and be awesome. Ibris is an IMT at Derryford Hospital at Plymouth. Uh, she's also the trust, freedom to speak up guardian, uh, chair of the junior doctors committee and co-chair of the BMA Southwest Regional BAME Network. Um, Ibris was nominated by multiple people who also share thank you emails and learning from uh, excellence awards from many projects that she's been involved in. Uh, that's no surprise that Ibris is described as gracious with her time. In particular, she has worked hard on an enhanced induction for international medical graduates and authored the Road to the UK blog. Her nominators have praised her for her work on equality, diversity and inclusion from the ground level. She has been described as a real inspiration and a great example to international medical graduates. And if I may add a personal note, uh, Ibris and I met probably over a year and a half ago now in my office. And right from the word go, I was in awe of her uh, inspiration, dedication and motivation to make things work. And I've learned a lot from her. So. Uh, it is a great pleasure to announce this award for Ibris and well done and thank thank you Ibris um, for for being a champion for EDNI uh, in the postgraduate medical education. Well done. So the first thing that was mentioned was my role as the chair of the junior doctors committee. In every hospital you will have a junior doctors forum. Basically, it's a group of doctors who come together and try and see how they can help their fellow colleagues in everyday things, like maybe their concerns related to rota gaps, locums, maybe there's issues that junior doctors have a voice about and they want to raise. This is what the forum is for. And then within that, or really in the more of a core sense, there is a junior doctors regional committee. And within this committee, there is a chair. And that's what I was. I was the chair of the junior doctors regional committee. As the chair, we would have monthly meetings where we would hear about anything, any concerns that the junior doctors would have. I would meet also with the guardian of safe working hours to look over exception reports or any other issues that junior doctors may have raised related to RODAR and working hours. I was also a part of the local negotiating committee or the LNC, which was made up of consultants and specialty registrar doctors or SAS doctors. And basically in that role, I also expressed whatever issues the junior doctors had and things that I thought I could raise to their level as well, since they were consultants who could then talk about these things further on. There were certain times where I even met with the medical director, deputy medical director, or other individuals within the hierarchy of, I suppose, the hospital ship to discuss other things that we thought were pertinent and problems that we thought that they needed to know about. So it was a role with quite a bit of responsibility, to be honest. It was very time demanding. Um, I would have these meetings, you know, in the middle of the day, during my lunch hour, maybe in the evenings after work, when, during my on calls, I would have to field emails from, you know, junior doctor concerns. There wasn't really a time where I could just be like, okay, well, I'm not gonna look at these emails now, or I'm not gonna deal with these things right now because it was an ongoing thing. 
Now, how did I become the chair? So if you keep an eye out, or if you just look in your hospital and see where your junior doctor committee meets or how they're doing their meetings, they will have at some point applications out for chair and basically you just send in an application. I mean, this could vary from hospital to hospital, but at my hospital, yeah, you sent in an application. Once you got shortlisted, you were interviewed. The interview is kind of just pretty basic. It's the panel from um, the JDRC and they just kind of ask you a couple of questions. And if they're happy, they choose you as chair. And it's a year long post. And within that year, you try and do something or make a change or at least just try and fix things that come to you as they come to you. So like I said, it's, it was a pretty rewarding role, but very time demanding. But if it's something that you're interested, by all means, go ahead and try and pursue that. The next role I had was as co-chair of the BMA Regional Southwest Ethnic Minorities Network. So the BMA is the British Medical Association. It's a union. We recommend to everyone basically to join a union. You don't have to join the BMA. There are other unions out there, but we are part of the BMA and under their umbrella, they do a bunch of different types of networks throughout the region. I mean, there are just general regional networks, then, you know, your junior doctor reps. And one of these networks is for ethnic minorities. And this was something I was pretty passionate about anyway, just in my general, you know, day-to-day -day work and stuff that I was already doing as, as chair of the junior doctors committee. So for this, there was an online application through the BMA portal. So you have to be a BMA member to go ahead and apply for these things. There was a short listing after you submit um, your just general application. And then the voting goes down with all the other BMA members. They put up the voting in their, in their portal and then you are chosen that way. I was co-chair because for our region, for the Southwest region, we or consist of Severn and the Peninsula, which is a pretty big region. So there's two of us to maintain all of that. So if that's something also that you're interested in doing, you can look at the BMA to see what other roles or responsibilities they have within your area. And if that's something you're interested in pursuing, by all means, go ahead. My third role was as a freedom to speak up guardian. I talk a little bit in a video that I've done previously about what I do as a freedom to speak up guardian. But honestly, the role overall is still something that is, again, a little bit time consuming and very eye opening. So the freedom to speak up guardians basically are those individuals. These are guys that you can go and speak to if you feel like, you know, somebody's bullying you, you feel like somebody's being disrespectful, you feel like something's not right in the workplace and you're not maybe sure who do you turn to next. They can kind of be your bridge, help you figure out, all right, where should you turn next? Who are the ideal people for you to raise this concern with? And you can raise your concerns with them, you know, in person openly, you can do it confidentially and you can do it anonymously. Like even the guardian doesn't know who the person is that's raised this concern. For me, getting the freedom to speak up guardian role, I think was probably the biggest achievement, mainly because it was such a difficult process. I did not realize how much would go into it to be completely honest with you. I needed to have references. Um, I had to write a whole thing about why I wanted to do this. And if I'm not mistaken, I had like three interviews, guys. Three interviews was pretty mind boggling. There was just a general interview with everyone um, who was part of the Guardian team. There was a discussion with the HR because you work alongside HR for a lot of these things. And then there was like an ethical kind of, or you know, scenario where if somebody came to you with problems, how would you deal with it and how would you highlight to the right people and what were the ways that you actually spoke to the people who were raising these concerns. So the guardian role is to your post. Um, and like I said, it, it's pretty time demanding as well. The reason I decided to pursue the guardian role is you don't actually see a lot of doctors or I actually don't know a lot of doctors who, who are guardians. And I think that is something that makes it difficult for doctors then to raise concerns because sometimes when you have a problem, you want to go talk about your problems to somebody who kind of at least is aware of your situation or has gone there, you know, or has been there before. So it was good for me to know that by being a doctor in this role, I was hopefully making it more acceptable for other doctors than to come and speak to a guardian. And I was really privileged that in my role as chair of the junior doctors committee, I was again able to highlight to individuals that I was also there as a guardian in case anyone needed to speak to me privately about something. And then I could raise those concerns through the appropriate channels without their having to do much more than just kind of tell me what the problems are and how we can proceed to fix those issues. I wanted to say also the guardian role isn't just about your time. 
there is an emotional weight that comes to it. You have to understand the rules of confidentiality and the privacy that surrounds it. The Guardian role overall, though, is a really fantastic role. If you're interested in pursuing it, by all means, go for that as well. And lastly, the things that were mentioned were my commitment to diversity, equality, and inclusion. So I really want to know <laughs> who used those words. Those words sound fantastic. I don't necessarily know if they completely and totally describe me, but I think for the most part, the work that we already do with Road to UK is something that is about trying to get more inclusivity, about ensuring diversity and equality, I suppose in the general sense. We have been working hard, as many of you know, to get a proper, structured, IMG enhanced, specific induction to make sure that international medical graduates never have that issue where they're pushed into a new environment and they have no idea what's happening and they don't know who to turn to either. And really, all of that kind of meshed together is, is what fueled me to take on the roles that I did take on. So by being an IMG, I didn't necessarily understand much of what the junior doctors committee did or what the form was about, but I saw it, I learned about it, and I decided to pursue it because it was something that I thought I could learn more from and it would allow me to also then inform more IMGs about so that they could also follow this route. Same way with the BMA and with the Freedom to Speak Up Guardians, I was really trying to encompass more of my colleagues who were international graduates. I think as a whole, I'm, I don't know how to do this or I need help with this because we are scared. There may be backlash. Like, why do you, why do you not know this? Everyone should know this at this point. And that's not true. There's always a learning curve for everything that you do. And it's really important that you can exemplify that and let IMGs know it's okay to not know something or it's okay to not be okay sometimes. And that there are people out there that you can talk to. Now, I do want to say, guys, I know I did a lot of things and it might seem like, Breeze, what are you doing? Otherwise, do you not have a job anyway? Are you not on call? Do you not work as a doctor? Are you not in training? Yeah, so I'm one of those people. I do juggle a lot of things and I get bored if I'm not doing a lot of things at once. So that is my personality. I would say never try and stretch yourself too thin. I knew this was my limit as many things as I took. I probably could have applied for other things, but I knew I couldn't go any further. My educational supervisor actually at one point, uh, when we were going over my portfolio, he stopped and he looked at me, he's like, Breeze, if you apply for anything else, I will be very unhappy with you. <laughs> and I think it was just basically because he was concerned that I would not be able to balance things. And definitely there were moments where I was doing three or four meetings a day. Um, and that came with the rules that I was involved in, but I enjoyed doing that. And I think that's a really important thing. Do not undertake any role because you're like, ooh, this is gonna look really good on my portfolio or I hope I get this or that kind of recognition out of it. You shouldn't do anything with the intention of getting something in return. And that's always been my at least that if you're doing something, it, it should be that you are passionate about it, that you are interested in making a difference or really that you're like, this is something that I really do want to do. And yes, all of this did culminate in my becoming trainee of the year. But funnily enough, I didn't even know this this award existed until it, it was. Ba I was basically I basically got an email that said I was nominated for it. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually the first year our region has done it. It's not like in August of last year when I was going through these applications and wondering what I should apply for or what roles to undertake that I had a target in my mind that I knew there was going to be this trainee of the year award and these would be the right things to get those tick boxes so that they would say, hey, Breeze is the person that we want for this you know, award. So I did all these things because I wanted to do these things, that I was passionate about doing these things. And for me, there was no greater joy knowing that I could actually hear out somebody's concerns and then be able to help them resolve those problems. In this year, I've also been trying to get other IMGs that I work with involved in some of these roles. And a lot of them have been super reluctant. They're like, nah, they're not gonna let an IMG do anything like this. Or, you know, it's not easy for an IMG to do stuff like that. But I'm like, guys, I'm doing it. You can do it as well. If you feel like this is something that you wanna do, if you're interested, by all means, apply for it. No one's going to stop you and say you're an international medical graduate. No, 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 no. You cannot apply for these things. No one's going to tell you, um, actually, you have to have graduated from Britain. Otherwise, you can't do any of these things. No one's going to stop you. The only thing that's going to stop you is you telling yourself you can't do it. And yeah, 
you might not get it the first time. It's not like everything I've ever applied for in my entire life, I've always gotten. You gotta roll with the punches. You get your feedback, understand what mistakes you may have made. Maybe you were you know, under experienced or under qualified. Fix those things, improve yourself and go ahead and try the next time. So even if you don't become the chair or you know, you don't become part of the board or whatever, you can still be part of these groups, of, of these committees how you can do other things and ask the most important thing is to ask be vigilant read your emails see what the hospital is looking for find out if there are any other trust level organizations where they're looking for junior doctor input if there's any consultant who's looking for a junior doctor to do a particular role no one will hand you anything no one will say do you know what i know that one person and they would be really perfect for that role that's very rare you need to put yourself out there and show others that you know what this person is a really good person for this role because i see them always trying to achieve those types of things i will say now a year into this anywhere in the hospital if there is an international graduate who is struggling i will get a consultant who will email me and say yeah, I've heard your name around and people say that you do help IMGs. Can you see if you can help me with this thing? And I will say a lot of that is because our postgraduate center is wonderful and they do tell people when they feel like somebody needs help, Breeze or Ibrahim is there. So it is a little bit about knowing how to sell yourself, being confident in your abilities and just going for it. And I'll say it again, it doesn't mean you'll always get it, but at least you can learn from the journey and you can strive to achieve something in the future. I hope this video has set you on the path to achieving the goals that you set for yourself and that you guys are confident in how you can do this. Remember that we're always there. You can always comment below if you have any questions or concerns. And if you like the content that we're putting out there, please think about buying us a coffee. But until next time, please do subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Bye.